Hey, what's going on everybody here? Welcome to an x 11 video. I am FGG Full Tilt Gaming, so thanks for joining us today. So you guys that have been in some of my x videos have been asking me to do one of these uh, setup videos. So I am finally going to do one of these for you guys. Um, y'all have uh, y'all have wanted me to do these for quite a while, but uh, the video was like seven months old, but then I wound up getting it and I was like, well, how did all these views get on this video? Well, anyway, uh, it put on like 10,000 views in literally a couple of days, and people were like, well, hey, how do you have all this stuff set up? <laughs> I was like, what in the world? I was like, well, that was like seven months ago. Why don't you guys ask back then? And I would have been glad to like start walking back through and, you know, doing more x -plane. So anyway, here it is. Here's your setup video. I uh, hope you guys enjoy. And if you haven't, uh, if you're one of the new guys, maybe it's to the channel, you're finding this, you're looking for GoFlight stuff, feel free to ask questions. Um, and I'm going to go through a lot of stuff today. So let me go ahead and I'm going to get into it and we'll set up exactly what we're going to do, to do today. Um, especially if you're like, I don't have a really 20 minutes to see her and watch this. Throw some earbuds in, put your phone in your pocket, do whatever you need to do. Cause we're not going to be doing a bunch of flying and a bunch of showcasing, but I am going to be doing some talking about the go flight setup. Uh, we are going to look through the panels a little bit more in depth to show exactly what I do have. We're also going to talk about how this all works with X-Plane, and we're going to talk about why I chose to go with GoFlight um, over some of the other options out there for X-Plane users in the hardware market for X-Plane materials. So, and also we're going to talk about where X-Plane, uh, I mean, sorry, where uh, GoFlight is right now, uh, where they are as a company, and where they are going to be hopefully here in the future. They've had a rocky, they've had a really rocky last uh, last quarter here of 2018. 2019 has brought on a lot of changes, so we're going to talk about at least as much as I know from what I've been uh, told through our email uh, correspondence back and forth with GoFlight. So, anyway, let's jump into it. I'm going to take the uh, I'm going to take the GoFlight. I mean, sorry, I'm going to take the uh, the GoPro off here, and let's uh, let's go ahead and start diving into some of this. So, well, I'm running single monitor right now. Normally, I run this all in triples, but for video purposes, I have to run off the center monitor. That way, you guys can see everything. If not, it just looks too close and people are like why are you sitting up on the dash and i'm just it's annoying so anyway uh so don't mind the pedals we didn't bring our rudder out here either there's just no point in doing all that and setting it up and it takes a ton of floor space we've got the say tech uh up here and i've got uh, usually i got my keyboard over there but i normally just uh I normally throw up the uh, the ipad up on that little stand there and it usually runs on my charts etc etc um so here's what we got mcp pro this is from GoFlight. this is their uh copy of the boeing 737 autopilot now it does resemble minus the color seven fives and seven sixes not really the triple seven you can't get away there are some functions that those have but there are some functions that they have that are pretty much the same you just kind of have to train do a little bit of translating for it so um, but if flight directors your autopilot disengage you've got your pilot and your co-pilot command uh as well um, so if you want to turn, you know, this stuff on, flip your flight director on, there you go. You, you can see how it's already up on the screen. It's already moving through the, through the paces. You want to do your auto pilot. Of course, it's not going to arm the auto throttle because we don't have uh, any throttles actually running. Uh, hence, AK, the engines are not on. Uh, altitude, same way. So if you want to do altitude hold, you can do that. Now, none of this stuff is really going to take place and, and actually do anything because we're not actually moving and not, uh, engines aren't running. We're plugged up the GPU right now, so um, yeah, none of this stuff is going to work like it's supposed to. But once you get up in the air, all of this stuff illuminates, comes alive. You can do everything. VNAVs, LNAVs, VOR lo uh, localizers, uh, heading select. You can even do this. So right, I'm not sure right now we're pointing at 08382. So if I push this button, and this was a custom program by me, push the button, it goes down and does a heading sync. So pulls right into 082. So anyway... Autopilot, it's great. Uh, here's another cool one. This is another one I really like. I like the landing gear one. This is the second reiteration. They did a landing gear one, which uh, kind of had more of a, uh, uh, really had more of a um, general aviation feel to it. Um, so this is the second one that's supposed to feel and have some more of that, you know, airliner esque feel to it. Um, so it doesn't have the big trim, but it does have trim here, aileron trim and rudder trim. It all works. It's it's um you know it's not it's not hugely. Uh, I wouldn't say it's all that. Uh, I had to be careful there. I won't say that I use it all that much. I don't use it that much on seven thirty seven because I have uh, rocker switches up on my thumb of my Satek yoke that I actually use for the rudder like they do. I'm not rudder, but the the elevator trim like they do on the real thing. Um, yeah, you, you can hear them running up and down. 
yeah so anyway uh, I've got that set up so but the thing I do use I do use the flap detents here um, so those you can see that pulling the flap down um, so that works as it's supposed to and then also have the gear now you can actually see the gear there in your um, a window there so when I lift this now I can lift it all the way up but it's only in the sim going to let me go halfway because it's not going to let me fold the gear up while I'm actually on the ground so you go all the way up the gear would go up in the up position you would pull it down here into the middle position it would go into the closed or locked position there like it is on the sim right now and then you could do this and actually lower it down and the gear would fall out uh, from underneath the carriage so anyway pretty cool that it does all of that stuff so it is a three selector gear and then it flaps again. Now I use this as, uh, yes, you see engine start. Uh, so I can actually go back, switch it over to right, back to center, and then switch it over to the left side. So however you want to run that, uh, it's up to you. That's kind of like a freebie. You can make it whatever you want to. Um, so aside from that, that's pretty cool. Um, all right, so the next one down here is the RP48. Now, I have two of these, and the reason I bought these, GoFlight actually makes a, um, an EFIS panel that looks just like um, this panel right there above to the left of the GoFlight. It looks just like it. It's got the four buttons. It's got this, the six or seven buttons on the side. It's got the VOR switches um, into uh, where you can pick up the ADF one and two or the VOR one and two. Um, I chose to get these RP48s and put them in the panel. I kind of custom built this whole thing from GoFlight um, and it just kind of talked through the panels I wanted and the arrangement that I wanted these in and they custom did this for me and sent it to me all in one unit, which was pretty cool. Uh, so kudos to them for working with me and doing a custom setup. Uh, but let me fold some of these out of the way. Um, right on these, we've got four rotaries. They'll go left and right, clockwise and anti-clockwise. And then we've got uh, eight push buttons. And basically these all uh, interact and act just like the EFIS display. So right now it's reading, uh, our Sierra EFIS display there is reading off the FMC left which is what it should be doing. But I can activate, there's VOR1 plus the DME there's the VOR2 and then I can start activating everything. Now that's the weather ring and then we've got uh, there's our VOR uh, VORs within a 40, 40 mile radius and there's our airports just come kind of waypoints and there's our airport so if you zoom in you'll see all the waypoints now it looks a little better when you've actually got a flight plan loaded in uh, you can see all those waypoints and how they interact around the airports that you're flying in and out of but anyway that's pretty cool you can actually see there where the waypoints are lining you up into the various runways which is always cool and then I have a traffic ring now the traffic ring comes up whenever we are altitude reporting so that's why that light is not up it's actually that light will come on when we are uh, transmitting altitude reporting mode on our transponder so that's a kind of a, a little visual I kind of custom programmed myself just to say hey I want this light to come on whenever we do XYZ and then it does it so uh, that's always nice that's what's good about these they're generic so you can literally do anything you want if you wanted to set these up right now if you see the main panel uh, you see the main panel you see the lower panel you see uh, you're in one set speed ref if you want to set those four rotaries right there to be these four rotaries, then you could. Um, it, it really, it would be just be about figuring out what data refs those are controlling and assigning those data refs to these rotaries. And we could get into that later. Um, and then, so here's the cool thing. Got TQ6. We'll move right on down the panel. It sets up as a multi multitude of different throttles. This thing can be a 737. It can be a 747. It can be a multi-engine. It can also be a single engine. Would you normally hop in a Cessna and use this for your Cessna control? Well, I guess if it's the only thing you had, you would have to. And it would be okay, and it wouldn't be the end of the world. Um, someone commented on the video and said, hey, do you use this to control your Cessna? No, because I don't fly a Cessna. I just don't. Um, if I do, I'll use it to shoot approach, or I'll use it to shoot something and practice something in slower. Uh, and then that way, whenever I actually get in a pilot edge or get into some type of online situation where I actually need that, then yes. I will go ahead and have that ready and I'll use the Cessna for it. But other than that, no, I do not fly a Cessna or really any kind of slow single engine. The slowest single engine I have is the Pilatus PC-12, um, but it's because I, I just love, that's one of my favorite single engine planes. Um, so aside from that, this thing comes with a bunch of these. Um, let me just grab all these off the table here. It comes with a ton of these. And you may say, well, what are all those? These are all levers that are substitutable inside of the TQ-6. So, if you want to use uh, if you want to use these right here, the white ones, you just plug these in like so. So 
there's that one. We do this one here. And now you've got a two engine airliner. So this could be CRJ, it could be 737, 5767. You get where I'm going with this. So we'll take that out, put those off to the side there. And if you want to hop into a Beechcraft 1900D, well, you could, if you wanted to, take your speed brake out. You could go ahead and slide one here. Then you could slide one here. But I'm just, for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to hook these two up. Slide those in like that. Now you've got a multi-engine setup that actually looks like it. Now it actually feels right when it's over here because it's right here in that perfect palm range. But I also have, it comes with two of the prop control levers. So they're even blue like they are in the real plane. So those go in next and then you can have two separate mixture controls. Now typically what I do, now this is what I love about this stuff because um, what I will do since I'm a little bit shorthanded on the flaps, I will actually leave the speed brakes here I'll leave the reverse one here. I'll just pull this one over and use it side by side. I'll do the throttle side by side. I'll do one prop here, and then I'll do one mixture where the flap is, and I'll just I have a different profile for this TQ6 that I'll do it, use it for that purpose. So I can have these things right here. That way I can have mixture control for engine one and two and prop control for one and two, and that way I don't have to worry about, uh, you know, that way I know both of them are moving at the same pace. Um, so that that's kind of nice to have so anyway that's that the next one that's really cool is these and I'm going to kind of run pretty quick through these uh, just because I want to make sure I get to some of the other stuff before uh, I start losing people um, <clears throat> let me go ahead and make this window just a little bit bigger so you guys can see it a little bit better we'll, do, we'll try to do a half and half here all right so let's uh, let's see if we get to there we go um, so what I have here is I have all of these logo. I've got nav, strobe, beacon lights all on right here. I also have, you see all of our landing lights come on. There is our runway turn off left and right, and then our taxi. I love this one of my favorite uh, panels. I've decided and told uh, the GoFlight interface tool uh, to turn these lights on when certain things happen. So these are basically on off lights. This is essentially what they are. You could make these be icing. If you want to have these control your packs, you want one of them to control your hydraulic pumps, one of them to control your engine one and two electrical, uh, you want engine anti-ice, wing anti-ice, window heat, pitot heat, whatever. Every bit of that stuff can be on these toggle switches if you want to. I chose to do the, the, the lights because that's the other thing that does move. Your packs, once you actually get up in the air, your packs really don't move. Your hydraulics, electrical, none of that stuff does. Most of that upper head panel stuff, once you're actually started and you're up in the air, most of that never changes. So there's no point in assigning a bunch of throttles and I mean assigning a bunch of controls to do none of that because you don't need it. So that's why I decided to do lights because you actually do control lights quite frequently uh, at most parts in the thing. So anyway, back down to my RP40. I said none of these things were super, 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 um, you know, functional. If you're looking there on the bottom of the screen, right up underneath, so it would be right here you see our engine select and our engine start so i'm going to go ahead and switch on our engine start that was on the lg2 that was right here that little switch so now i can turn this on and look what happens so now my engine starts going to ground now once our now we're not actually apu bleeding and all that other stuff so it's not going to start but we could start it from there and that's when we can actually kick on our fuels. Our fuels assigned to that as well. Um, and the same way with this one. So this is our other engine start selector two. See how that works. And then this one is assigned to our alder brakes. So we'll move it up just a little bit so you can see. So you can see we've got our alder brakes right there. So reject the takeoff and there's a off and then all the way to max. And it stops too. So it's not like you keep turning through the knob just now my knob keeps turning, but it's not gonna let me go any further than that. So it knows boundaries and I've programmed the boundaries for those rotaries to stay into. So that's pretty cool. I like that. Um, and that's just part of what you can do with it. So I also have a couple of other things. Um, if I can, let me just see if I can get this down a little bit. So there you go. Um, so what I have here, I have are two different things. So if we wanted to start one engine, we could um, actually start. Let me, let me actually, we'll just do this right now. That way I'll showcase it all. So we'll turn our packs into the off position here. Uh, there we go. So now we've got start. We're bleed from our APU. 
There's that. We'll get our, our GPU off. All right, so there's low pressure on our engine electrical. I right, hear it. Hear it firing. So now you see our light came on. So that means that our engine temperature and N1 have gotten to the point by which it says, okay, now you can go ahead and fire up. That means our, our open valve, our start valve is now open. So now we can actually add some gas to the fire. And then there goes our alter gate. That's what that alarm is. <laughs> but it's like, oh my God, it's on fire. So you can see there in our, in your, uh, t I guess top left, you can see our engine's actually coming alive now. Um, and that works out great. So this one, you don't even have to look at your stuff. Now I can switch this selector back. Uh, we're still in APU bleed. Switch that back. Let's go ahead. Let's fire this one right here. You'll see this light come on. There it comes on. So now our start valve is open. We're waiting for our engine temperature and N1 to come up. Uh, and once it gets up to the proper amount here, we're going to hit this button. And you'll see on your screen there where engine 2 uh, fires. So there's that. There goes our engine temperatures coming on up. Should uh, should peter out about 500 and then come back down and settle in around 440. And then back, there it is right there. So now our engine temperature hit its nominal value of 420. So now it will come back and settle in. So our engine temperature really shouldn't go underneath that. If we have some type of an engine deal, uh, those lights will cut off. So there's that one. Our, our engine start valve is now closed and that light is on. So now we're good. So now that means that we've got fuel flow to both of our engines if those lights go out it means we've got a problem so anyway that's just a little bit of how i decided to to do the engine panels so now we actually have engines but we can go ahead we'll pull the fuel out of those there you go and now they're cutting off we just zap the fuel to them so we've still got our apu going so we're good all right so now well, beside that, we've got our chimes for seatbelts. Turbulence, chimes, and then we have our seatbelts warning. So if you have anything tied to the seatbelts, sounds wise, different sounds packs or uh, passenger packs, if they're sound to that, uh, those will also trigger it if they're triggered off the main uh, data ref for the uh, seatbelts. So aside from that, we have two other ones down here, and those are um, our dome lights. You can kind of see the, li the light illuminating, but I have a, a thick dome light here, a heavy one, and then I have a light dome light. Uh, so if you're up in the sky and it's pitch black, you don't really want to turn on the huge bright light. You can turn on a little bit of bright light. So um, aside from that, the other part here that really has changed to how I um, really do anything in X-Plane is the radio panel. Uh, this radio panel has been absolutely phenomenal. Um, I love it. Uh, this is one of my favorite panels and one of my favorite parts to this. Now, you can do a lot of things, but I'm just going really quickly. Obviously, you know how these work. But these work the same inside the... You know, so it's playing all the sounds from the data refs inside the sim. So you can go ahead and activate COM1. You can monitor COM2. You can also do these off single panels. So if you just buy these single panels by themselves, they won't say COM1. They'll just say something like COM uh, or radio, or they'll just say active and standby. And they could service the COM1s, COMs 2s, NAV1s, and NAV2s. The only reason that these say all four of them is because I actually bought this one single panel here that all four of these are hooked to. So that's the reason why mine's like this and your, yours may not be. So we're reading COM1 here, reading COM2 there, NAV1 and NAV2. These you just have to figure out which one. And usually it always loads up the NAV1 first whenever you hop into the plane and then your NAV2 winds up being the second, uh, at least NAV2. So even if you found out they're switched, you could still do that and they go back to NAV1 and NAV2. But the reason why that's kind of cool is because when you hit the right side, it actually shows your ADF. So if, you're due, if you do wind up tracking some weird, obscure ADF just for, uh, just for checks or just for direction, whatever, um, then, then this one will actually do it if that's what you want it to do. And nav one and two, let's see, it's to switch over just like the comm unit. So anyway, this is, uh, this is, this is, this is it. This is the, this, the, this is the big deal. I mean, I, I, um, it took me a long time to learn how to do this. I'm not going to lie. Um, it did not uh, take me overnight to learn this. Um, but let me show you what I did use uh, to do it. And that's this little program right here. This little program is the GoFlight interface tool. And everything about this tool gives me everything I need to know. Uh, it tells me exactly how many units I have hooked up. It gives me our, our what we are uh, green lights here with X-Plane. And also gives me 
uh, the aircraft, what I'm am, what mode, what it's actually reading off of, and what it's actually successfully reading. Now, some of this stuff you don't have to have. Um, you don't have to have all this stuff because it's already reading it anyway. Um, at least I don't ever, I don't ever do it. I've never had a problem. But you can also generate Lua scripts out of this, and also uh, Detective is where you find out where everything's at. Now, I'm not going to go into all that for the video because I need to go through some more stuff. But I wanted to show you. This is how this is our this is our top button. This is our button right here, our EFIS button. So this is how everything's um, is is put in here. So you can see how you go through each button uh, is the same. You go to the rotary side, you go to device zero. You can see you got four rotaries. So all this stuff, you know, works the way it's supposed to. You can see we've got the decision height, we've got our EFIS control, uh, captain side map, uh, captain side map zoom, and then there's our barometer. Um, so all of that's up on that side, and, and then that's kind of how this works. So, um, you know, as we look into it, I'm going to leave this up so you guys can kind of check some more things out. But as we kind of look at some of this, let me go ahead and tell you guys why I decided to go with GoFlight, because that is the title of this video. I decided to go with GoFlight because um, GoFlight uh, offered me a flexible, versatile pedestal to learn. One of these days, I would really love to get into a 737 um, half cockpit, uh, you know, whether it's a trainer with a pedestal and an overhead. I, I would love to get into something of that nature. Um, if anything, for my piddling, uh, for me wanting to always move ahead and just I love um, I love this stuff. And GoFlight was a good a good trainer tool to get into that. But now that I actually know how everything works, um, it actually is now functional and versatile and flexible. And by flexible, what I mean is I don't just able to do this with this plane. Some people say, why, why, why wouldn't you go with CP flight or go with open cockpits, the 737 and buy some of their stuff, man. It's crazy cool. It looks just like a 737, yada, yada, yada. I've kind of heard it all before. The thing about it is none of their stuff works with anything other than a 737. There is no program that's been written out there that's been built that Polypot software is $28 US, and it makes all of this stuff come to life, uh, come to life. And the cool thing about this is I've got this working on the 757, 767, 777. I've got it on the Beach 1900 from Coronado, the PC-12 from Coronado. Got it on the King Air 90B from X-Plane, and also the King Air 200 from Coronado as well, and the MD-80. I was attempting to run the CRJ-200, but I just ran into too many problems because the gizmo and just the plug-in it wasn't it wasn't allowing me to read data refs the same. Um, it just oh it just oh it just got it got under my crawl. I hated it, um, so I got rid of it and said I I'm not even I can't even be bothered with it anymore. So I just stuck to these planes and that's what I've been in so far. I have not tried on the air the Airbus. I've been a little bit fearful to do those um, and waste them big huge amount of money. I do know the big um, if you're looking at the 320 from Flight Factor, I know that it is not compatible with a lot of this because of how that plane was originally made. Um, the Toolis uh, A3 A319 probably will work because they're all using data refs and custom data refs from their actual uh, plane and sim. So that one will probably work. But anyway, the reason I did that is because I can use this set of panels on everything because most of it is generic. The, this is generic and can be versatile to get multiple multitude of different things. The only thing that really, 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 really looks like a 737 is the MCP. Um, even the radio stack is does not really resemble uh, this because it should be side by side by side. Um, and we don't even have that here. So, uh, you know, from that perspective, uh, we don't even need it. And none of this stuff is really in the exact right place, but it works for me um, for where this stuff is. Um, it really, this really, this whole setup feels better as a multi-engine setup uh, for a plane like a 1900 or a, a King Air or something of that nature. Um, and this is the, really the one thing that sets it off as a 737. So uh, as it is, I love it. Um, I wouldn't trade it. it. It's really, really, really nice. Um, and I hope you guys will consider this. Um, I know GoFlight, as I said, GoFlight is going through some issues where they have sold the company. Um, and as of January 15th, new guys were coming in that were very versed in, in mechanical engineering, had done work there, and had worked alongside GoFlight with their stuff. Um, so it's someone knowledgeable that's wanting to bring new uh, tech, new equipment into GoFlight, as well as restock and re uh, get all of their current stuff up to speed. So, you know, the yokes, the rudder pedals, all the things that they were selling that I don't know where that stuff went. And I honestly don't know what happened to them. Um, you know, I hope nothing bad was because of the, the, at least the cause of why they shut down. 
um, and sold the company. But um, I'm glad that someone is going to take it over under the name and do it right. Um, you know, they, they've uh, they were helpful and very helpful with me. So keep them on your bookmark menu. Uh, go check them out and see as things kind of start to take some shape. I would not for right now would not go try to go buy a bunch of this stuff. Um, you know, if you could find it on eBay, fine. Uh, they don't even sell this uh, this nice case that all this is in the center pedal. So I don't even sell that anymore. You know, they just got the MCPs back online. Uh, I don't even know if they sell landing gear. Uh, the TQ6, last I checked, wasn't even in stock. So there's a lot of stuff that's just so backlogged. I don't I don't know. Maybe that's why it happened. But um, anyway, uh, hopefully at some point they can. So here's my challenge. Here's what I want you guys to do. Um, I want you guys to let me know in the comments section if you want me to, to do a part series on this. If you have panels, you would like for me. If there is an overwhelming, uh, if there's an overwhelming desire for me to do an actual, uh, this is how you program this, put it up in YouTube uh, for the guys to check out and, and be able to use your panels again, I am, uh, I am more than apt to do that. It's just going to have to be something nice and big for me to want to do that. So I hope this video finds you well. I hope it's something that you want to see more of. Uh, and especially if you want to see more of X-Plane and all these different types of planes that I said I had, you will see this go flies up. Like literally telling you, like the videos, come in and view the videos. Let me know in the comments. Hey, man, I want to see some more X-Plane. I'd love to see it. Um, you didn't really do a lot of it. And we didn't really get great views on anything. Um, so I, I have such limited time. I have to try to go to where the views are. Um, so I hope you guys understand that, but also understand, you know, it's, uh, it's not my full-time job. Um, and I do really enjoy doing this. So I hope you guys enjoy watching it, enjoy seeing some of this, and also want to see some more with these panels and, and how to program them and do them on your own. So anyway, that's it for me, guys. So like I said, like, subscribe, comment, let me know what you want to see. Let me know what you want me to do. And I'll do my best to make sure that I can uh, hopefully provide and make everybody happy. So anyway, that's it. And I hope, and I hope, and I say this, I would say this every, every episode, but I hope that I will see you here all in the next explanation video, guys. We'll see you. Peace out.